Welcome to chapter two. I apologize for my voice. Chapter two, history and astronomy, two of my favorite subjects together. Love it. Let's get right to it. So much to talk about. I've heard astronomy called the oldest science before. The oldest science because people even in prehistoric times, we can assume paid very careful attention to the skies because for them, it was a matter of life and death. They needed to know for example, when certain animals were going to migrate, when certain natural events were going to occur, like the flooding of the Nile. Uh, they needed to know when certain you know, wild plants and berries were going to grow. So we can assume that even prehistoric people probably had a very good working knowledge of the sky, probably much better than us in modern times, the average person. Of course, later in history, uh, for things like farming, when farming was developed and for navigation on the seas obviously uh, a lot of uh, importance there with the north star and with the southern cross and all kinds of things now the more advanced cultures started developing uh, monuments and things that were used at least in part to help keep track of the seasons to keep track of the solstices and things like that the most famous of these of course is stonehenge and Stonehenge really is truly ancient. It was built over a period of thousands of years in different phases. But of course, the end result is amazing. Specifically, there's a stone that's set apart, as I'll show you in a minute, called the heel stone. And that's what they used to mark uh, the solstices. I think that was the winter solstice for that one. It could be wrong. It could be summer. But anyway, I, even here in North America, the Plains Indians built something called the Bighorn Medicine Wheel. And uh, that was used to keep track of the sky. Not too impressive as a structure. And then a couple that I like to add in, uh, just because I visited there. I recently got to visit Caracol, built by the Mayans. That was sort of their observatory. And one that most people wouldn't include here, but uh, since I've been there and studied the astronomy there, uh, Machu Picchu, uh, built, of course, by the Incans during their sort of brief um, empire. In South America so let's get right to it let's start with we'll talk about the pyramids and stuff as well uh, we'll start here oh there's a much younger me at uh, Stonehenge and uh, used to you could actually walk right through the rocks there and now you have to stay a little ways away what an amazing structure just the engineering of that's incredible there are four little rocks located on each cardinal point around Stonehenge that literally mark north, south, east, and west. So the, the engineers thousands of years ago put those out there as markers, uh, probably before they started building. Now, oh, let's go back a second. This picture, you can see the heel stone uh, way off to the right. Let me see if the cursor will show up here. Way over here, that's the heel stone. So they would stand in the middle of this main structure and see the heel stone way off to the side, and the sun would rise behind it um at the solstice and they would know that that would be for example the shortest day of the year there's the bighorn medicine wheel at the upper left not much to it just some rocks thrown out there but still important for marking certain days of the year the solstices in particular i'm sure kind of an interesting phenomenon in modern times in the city of manhattan on certain days you can stand on one side of manhattan Let's say you stand on the west side of Manhattan and watch the sun rise in the east. That's true. That only happens on certain days. And so that's kind of an example of how ancient people would mark time. This is just sort of by coincidence because it's a grid uh, that it works that way. But it's pretty cool. And then there's Caracol. Now, the Mayan civilization reached its peak much later than, you know, Stonehenge or the pyramids. But uh, what an amazing structure it is. So I got to visit it. Um, this summer not too long ago and uh, I won't I won't go play the whole video here because I'm not sure that you can hear it well but I talk about the fact that certain windows in that structure were used for example to mark the position of the planet Venus and that's pretty advanced that's a much more advanced than a lot of other ancient structures which I think is really cool and it's just cool because it actually looks like a modern observatory it's amazing that they were still doing things like human sacrifices at that time. 
you know, something that seems so primitive, but at the same time, they were doing some pretty advanced engineering, as you can see, and advanced astronomy. Uh, the Great Pyramid there at Chichen Itza, that's where I was. Uh, it also has some astronomy alignments, which is pretty cool as well. There's my family there at the Great Pyramid. Now, another place I had the great fortune of visiting back in 2013 uh, was Peru. This is on the trip on the way to Machu Picchu. What a fantastic trip that was. And there it is, the famous lost city of the Incas. It really was lost for hundreds of years. Uh, the Spanish came through and wiped out the Inca civilization in a horrible way. Uh, but they missed Machu Picchu. And it lay there hidden for hundreds of years, covered over in brush and kind of like Indiana Jones style. It was discovered about a hundred years ago by an explorer. Uh, pretty amazing. So this whole city gives us a glimpse into their culture. But specifically right there, that is, was their observatory. And one specific thing they did, they had some windows there that would look out up into the mountains, as I'm going to show you right up in there, if you can see the cursor at the upper right. They also had this. This is the highest point of the city. And that's just a sundial, which is kind of cool. And then on the ground, they had this stone that normally you wouldn't think twice about. Uh, but it actually, they believe, was um, actually marked the Southern Cross. And it's actually just like the real Southern Cross in the sky. It's actually a line north and south. So we put an iPhone there with a compass. Sure enough. It was actually aligned, the axis of it, north-south, which is pretty cool. Now, the observatory at the heart of Machu Picchu pointed towards the mountains. And up in the mountains, look at this, that's called the sun's gate. And when the sun would rise on the solstice, it would come up right through a couple of those, um, I think they have a name, or they called crenels or something. But anyway, they would come up in that gate there, which is pretty awesome. What a beautiful, it's one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. We were sitting on the on the ledge there that's a thousand foot cliff and we're right on the edge it was an amazing view and you look you're looking down on machu picchu that's my dad there uh, it was an amazing trip now we learned a lot about uh, how the incas viewed uh, the skies and they did something that no other culture that i know of did they actually created if you look up here in this mural they created in the dark patches in the milky way the the dust and gas uh, they created constellations out of that. Nobody did that. It's so cool. So look at this. They had the shepherd and the llama, you know, things that were important to their culture, like llamas, the baby llama. It is so cool. And my recent trip to Chile, I got to see those much better, uh, some of those dark spots in the Milky Way. Fascinating. I saw this in a museum and immediately knew all about it just from my own simple little knowledge. I mean, obviously, look at this right in the middle you have the Southern Cross right there. You have the sun, uh, you have the moon, you have what could be something like a supernova, perhaps. Who knows? That's a cool one. It's just awesome. There's a rainbow, the Pleiades cluster, perhaps, or some other star cluster, the jewel cluster. Really cool stuff. All right. The Chinese were known for two things in particular that they really did an amazing job. The ancient Chinese kept track of things that were sort of sporadic. And thank goodness that they did. It gives us a great historical record. Things that they called guest stars were what we call supernovae. Supernovas. Isn't that amazing? They kept very careful track of those. We'll talk about that in a later chapter more specifically. And they also kept track of comets. That scroll right there, I got to see that actual scroll uh, in Fort Lauderdale one time. They had it in a traveling exhibit. It was so cool. But anyway, those are comets and the exact position in the sky where the comet was located and description of the comet tail. Fantastic job. It gave us such an insight. And some of those same comets will come back around and we can track them and know that they were the same ones that were seen by them. Amazing stuff. And then there were the Egyptians, of course. Take a look at that picture. So cool that we know that the inner chambers, there were shafts that pointed towards certain key stars like Thuban. Never heard of Thuban, huh? Well, Thuban was the North Star. It was their North Star because the Earth's axis changes over time through precession. 
that was their North Star. And they thought that the, the souls of the pharaohs would go in that direction, go up to the North Star or go to Orion, which, of course, was incredibly important to them as well. And um, so it's just amazing. The three pyramids at Giza are slightly um, misaligned. And they probably didn't know for a long time why that was. And then they realized they're actually lined up with the three belt stars of Orion, or at least that's what we think, which is pretty amazing. It's really cool that they paid attention to that detail. And then finally, I'll mention the ancient Babylonians who were responsible for many of our modern, uh, well, I shouldn't say modern, but many of the constellations that we still use today, constellations of the Zodiac that can be traced back to a civilization 5,000 years ago. The fact that a circle has 360 degrees is based on the fact that the earth takes about that long to go around the sun. Of course, we know it's 365, uh, but 360 is special because it's divisible by 12. So you can have a year with 12 months, 30 days each. Uh, so that's where we get 360 degrees in a circle. And the fact that there are 360 in a circle, that's also easily divisible by the number 60, which is eventually where we got 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. If you ever wondered where all that stuff comes from, it all goes back to astronomy, which is pretty cool. And it's about it. I had, this is a great finding from just a few years ago. This is amazing. So people, this is like, was a, a discovery that was hiding in plain sight in Peru where they had this wall and people for, you know, hundreds of years have just assumed that it was just a fortification of some type, you know, just a military wall. And then I think it was a, a, some university students or somebody pieced together the fact that if you stand in a certain place right here, that those different um, uh, markings, those different little windows, uh, they actually mark the solstices, as you can see in the picture. Isn't that incredible? And the equinox. So the sun's rising here, and then it's rising here in the winter. It's just incredible. And they figured that out that from one of their other spots, that that's how that works. So that's how a lot of the ancient structures worked. It was just marking the rising and setting sun, which changes every day. And it was vastly important, especially you can imagine the winter solstice, they'd be getting worried. The sun is drifting away. Well, the winter solstice, I should say, at a place like Stonehenge, the sun is drifting away to the south. Is it going to come back? They didn't know. And so they'd have ceremonies and stuff and hope that the sun would come back. I love history. It's amazing stuff, and the history of astron astronomy is particularly amazing to me, and I hope it is to you. Thanks for listening.